Hey guys! Hello! Dean, it is just the right time. That's what time it is. Just in case you were curious, we are right on time for when we were expected to be here. Just I wonder if they can hear us today. I think Tony's going to check that right now. <laughs> are we good, Tony? I can hear you. Oh, good. Hopefully everybody else can hear us and we're not just talking to ourselves. So, because that was fun on Friday. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Today is today? No, today's just Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday. We're just getting started. But there's another Friday coming up. That is true. <laughs> it is true. I made pillows yesterday on Twitch for about four or five hours. And so for those of you that joined us over on Twitch, that was a lot of fun. And it's kind of thrown off my video weeks because I've already started. And usually now is my first one. So I'm feeling a little seasoned already. <laughs> a little seasoned. You're well, cured. <laughs> a good piece of meat. <laughs> Anyways, alrighty. Well, for those of you that were here last Friday and watched the end of the watch band as I sewed it up, Denny very over nicely. here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Denny over here started working on some tooling for many of you guessed a beautiful photo slash portfolio slash whatever kind of album it is that you guys want to yes. make out in the world. So this is Denny's. This is Denny's album. This is your yeah, little portfolio. A lot of the saddles that I did, I made that portfolio deal years ago. Yeah, look at these pictures from the 80s. Yeah. Look at that. Guys, check these out. Yeah. Look at these fun saddles that Denny made back in the day. There's... That's not... Are those yeah, your there customers? I, there I am. Oh my goodness years gracious. Years ago in Grand Junction, Colorado. Uh, yeah, the focus is... Is it on manual? Yeah. Okay. Well, in any case, there's a blurry Denny. Look at that. Still rocking the same beard. <laughs> I shaved it probably pretty quick after that. It's just... And didn't have it again until about... Your hair years, is all back years. now, though. Yes. You had, you had some forward yeah, was, hair then. It was like that. Yeah. So, in any case, here's, here's some Denny saddles and some Denny customers. You sure have made a lot of saddles, sir. Do you have a count on how many saddles you've made? Uh, approximately 250. There, wow. There I am. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's me. How fun. Is that the end? Almost. Oh, look, there's a pup. That's, that's old Bob. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> that's Bob. <laughs> it's Bob the dog. <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, that's fun. Is yeah. that you too? No, that's, that's this fella here. Uh. He's a friend of mine in Colorado. Bob the dog. In any case, so this is what we're going to be working on. Look at that. Con is that a belt buckle? That was for David Frizzell. That belt buckle was made by the Bull and Silver Company, and that is solid gold, the Indian head, and this is solid sterling, of course, on the outside. Wow. But these conchos are solid gold. My goodness, that's an expensive belt. And there's old David. Oh, wow. With a strap. Look at that, guys. Anyways, back in 2008. Yeah, he just got inducted into the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame. And I saw a bunch of pictures of him, and he was wearing my guitar strap. Nice. Nice. That is super neat. Well, in any case, yeah. everybody can make one of these and then put all your fun pictures in. We should have more photo albums. I feel like looking at photos on your phone just isn't quite as it's, as yeah. fun as it is yeah. looking through an album. No one has paper photos. I know. Anymore. I had some printed. I made a collage of Chris and I a couple weeks ago. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Cool. And then we went to Alaska, and I was like, wow, I really made my collage too soon. Because now I have all these cool Alaskan yeah. pictures. That Make another one. Make yourself a photo album. Make myself a photo album. All righty. Well, so Denny has already got these tooled in together, so he's going to need to talk to you a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, this photo. This is going to be the same photo album as as what she just showed you, and okay. it's very simple. I don't know if you remember uh, last week when we were talking about folding the leather on the watch band. Oh, I already folded this and pre-trained it. Pre-trained it when it was wet. After you finished so, tooling. Yeah. Okay. So this well, is very what simple. are our dimensions? What do we got? Uh, gosh, I don't know. Well, that's, that's good information to give people. Yeah. Have this one. This total width is 11 and 3 quarters. That's inches for all of you who don't Anybody know. that might be metric, we're in inches yeah. here. So and 11 and 3 quarters. And the 
width of it is exactly 12. Okay. So it's approximately square. Yeah. But a, a 12 by 12 piece will, will get it. Okay. We'll get it. Okay. So we got 12 inches yeah. wa wa long. 12, 12 inches, or yeah, 12 inches wide. Okay. And then and 11, 11 and, three and three quarters, quarters tall. tall. I've said yes. that like three times. Hopefully everybody's got that. 11 and three quarters tall, 12 inches wide. And then what is your roll? Okay, the fold, each fold is three quarters of an inch for the first fold. This this fold right here is three quarters of an inch from here to here. Then for the second fold, we've got about an, yes, it's about an inch. Okay. So three quarters from here to here and one inch from here to here. And then did you skive those? Uh, yes, I did skive that down a little bit. I used five to six ounce leather here. Five to six ounce, okay. And I, and I just used a French edger. Yeah, just a, like a quarter yeah. inch one? Yeah, and just just went down each each slot there. Okay. Just a little bit, it enough to... Took off about of, like half. Yeah, enough to kind of weaken it where it'll fold easy. Mm-hmm. Then I, uh, of course... And you did I, it while I, it was wet. Yes, I wet it. And so then it I, didn't break the grain. And then I folded it. So there we have that. Okay, Denny, I've got a question for you. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, so Terry said that um, you are like him and that someone has been s slipping peroxide into his shampoo and taking all the color out of his hair. I know that happened. <laughs> uh, I don't know who did that or when. <laughs> but I looked in the mirror one day and there it was. <laughs> there it was. All righty. You know, when you, when you get to a certain age, you think, how did this happen? <laughs> Where did that go? I used to not be this old. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to imagine how it happened. I'm, I'm sure. It does. I'm, you know, I'll get there one day and I will get to have the same feelings. <laughs> all, all of you, if you live long enough, you will get old. <laughs> what do they say? You're, you're only young once, but you're old for the rest of your life. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Enough of that. Okay. <clears throat> so five to six ounce. Yes, five to six ounce. Well, and then we have some liner pieces. Yes. Yes. And I have a copy of the tooling patterns. If, I don't know if Tony wants to copy them and Scan let them you in. guys have them or not. But then I've got to the liner pieces. I'm going to line each, each side and I cut these big. Remember we always cut our liner's large. That's right. This is extra large, but that's okay. <laughs> because I didn't want to be too small. That's right. But I also want to, uh, this is five to six ounce. The main the main part of the body is five to six ounce. And this liner is about two, three ounce, two to three ounce. Okay. Kind of heavy, heavy too. But, too. Uh, but I want to stiffen it a little bit. I don't okay. want to be too thick, but I want to stiffen it a little bit. And a lot of times you can use Bontex, mm -hmm. but I've got a piece of uh, just a manila folder here. Yep, and we do carry um, five different thicknesses of Bontex these days. So if anybody out there has not seen that yet, we no longer just carry the one in the 0.04 to 0.05 range, um, which is what our standard Bontex, I think it was 0.043 is where our, our standard Bontex, but now we have like 0.02 all the way up to 0.0 six or seven something around so wow. yeah they're all they're all on the website um so we have different thicknesses so if you are wanting a sheet of Bontex it's cheap you could buy yeah. a couple at a time I think it's like the most it could be 10 bucks a sheet um and they're huge they're like a three yeah. by four so anyways yeah. just so you they, know they go a long way hey guys all right now I'm gonna put this uh, stiffener on the back side of one of these and draw around it because I'm gonna let you do your oh I'm gonna glue job on it okay if I can find a pin here I got right one back here oh I've got one here in my pocket got it in his pocket I did I did that so I would have it and <laughs> I forgot I did it okay uh, I'm just kind of gonna kind of center it up here you could round those corners off too if you wanted I could and I probably will with a pair of scissors here okay. after I get this marked that's a good idea. You're, I choose to believe that Mr. Denny's hair is a result of working with Lefty. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, you're right. We might have some pictures to disprove you, though, because 
we've only been working with Lefty for a couple years, and Denny's been here for a couple years longer than that, and I'm pretty sure you've been mostly gray for most of the you time think? that I've known you. Really? <laughs> God, I'm, I'm disappointed. I didn't realize I've always been like this. Yeah, see, you've just, you were only young for a little while. Yeah, <laughs> just one time. Just one time. All right. Okay. I'm going to give that to you, and I've got, I brought some paper in somewhere. Yeah, I thought you, you want did. to put that down. You went over there and got it. Did you lose it on your way over here? Oh. It was in front of me. <laughs> A bad spot right there where it is. Look, that guy that was playing baseball and hit the ball to him. He went like that and it bounced off. He said, it hit me in a bad spot right there in the glove, you know. <laughs> uh, All right. Um, do you know what thinner John would use on barred rubber cement? The tooling free one? Rubber cement? Does that? I, th I think you could uh, probably use mineral spirits. I don't know. I but to uh, regular, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think probably your regular barge thinner would also work. Uh, that, John, actually, let me barge. experiment with that. Yeah, a barge. Bit. We or yeah, if we have some rubber cement that we would like to try to ruin. I'm sorry. We just don't use rubber cement very often. Mm -hmm. Often enough to to know. But I'm gonna should be gray. Guys, Tony is struggle bussing this week. He did something on Monday. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. today's Wednesday. Yeah. So he stepped off the ladder after taking some pictures on Monday. Just right. Just he just did it just right. And now he's walking around like an old man. <laughs> He groans every time. Yesterday, he held his pee so long that he didn't know if he was going to make it to the bathroom after he finally was able to get stood up from his chair. Poor guy. Everybody give everybody give Tony a little bit of an easy time today. Oh, yeah, right. Like, that's going to happen. Well, he does that to everyone else all the time. He's so easy on it. He's so easy. That's right. Tangled up's looking out, looking out for me. That's right. She is. All right. Now, well... Liz, while you're gluing that, I have marked the other one to glue, but I'm also marking this uh, liner to glue. Okay. Do you think I need to put the glue on both sides of this? Or can I just, while this is still kind of wet, just put that paper down? Uh, yeah, try that. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, I think it'll work all right. Yeah, we're I'm excited to know. Horses are off from the... Are we really high-pitched? No, just not in line with the video, but... Oh. Uh, I had to refresh when it did that for me, too. Yeah, oh. Put that on try, and see what happens. Try refreshing, guys. Just as Lydia. Same problem. Morning, William. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Got it. Right. There's that one. Then I also want to put a pocket in. Oh. Ooh. Do I want the For pocket on the cards? front side or the back side? The front side. The front side? Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. That's what we'll do then. Yeah, because you don't have to turn all the way to the back to give somebody your business card. I, I made Chris a leather um, portfolio. I laced it all up, too. Really? Yep. I took a piece of the brown matte buffalo, and I had his logo lasered in the front of it. One day I might tool something, but I lasered that one. And uh, laced it all up, and I did the Chicago screws and put all those pictures in there. I thought it came out pretty nice. nice. Although I did, a, I did a full spine on mine. I didn't, I didn't do it like this. Um, and then just the screws are not hidden. They just go from the, the front uh -huh. to the back. Or maybe I installed a three ring binder in it. 
actually now that I'm thinking it's been several years I don't quite I think I think it has a three rebinder riveted onto the spine of it and I'm <clears throat> I'm doing the pocket now on on this piece and if you will notice I've already skived this mm -hmm. and, and trained it and with trained water it. yep so after I get this cut to about size, I'm going to let you glue that. Okay. Since I didn't. What kind of a pocket I, is this? It, a pocket to put things in. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you would call it. You guys got to name this kind of pocket. Is it a, how big of a pocket are we making? This is approximately, and it's the full width of one side. Oh, okay. It's approximately a six inch deep pocket. Okay. I'm just playing this by ear. I'm doing it as I go. He's willy nilly in this pocket. Willy nilly, <laughs> yes. Well, you're welcome, Troy. Thank you for saying so. Thank you. Troy said, thanks for doing these videos. We inspire people more than we realize. <laughs> we confuse Aww. people a lot, too. <laughs> that's, that's our real thing. We confuse just, ourselves sometimes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, okay. I'm gonna make a little mark here. Everybody see Denny's beautiful here. tooling on this? I don't think we've got a chance to look at it up close. Which I will do. As soon as Tony looks at me. Oh, I think we're still on manual. Oh, this might be fun today. <laughs> Look at those. All right. Uh, I think this is a neat. This is one. Yeah, that's Sergey. Both of these are Sergey stamps. Mm -hmm. Both of these geometric stamps are. Yeah, you did well. Like, I like, like how they're coming together. Yeah, it looks like lizard bellies. Mm -hmm. like lizard bellies. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now then, you can cement this and then cement this outer edge. Okay. And cement. Maybe like a quarter of an yeah. inch. Cement this edge and this edge. We're yeah, about, this. about a quarter of an inch. That's what we're yeah. doing right there? Yeah, that's okay. what we're doing right there. And it doesn't do have to be perfect because we're going to trim it. Okay. Okay. Now this one will be like. the back side. So I'm going to stamp my little cartouche on the back side of this. Your cartouche? My cartouche. We're going to lace this as that's my M.O. Yep. I love to lay stuff, and I don't know why I like it so much. But... Let's see here. I mean, when you sew something up, I feel like it could give the illusion that it may or may not be handmade. But when something is laced, there's really no question. What are you looking yeah. for? Water. And oh. I forgot it, so I'm going to go get it. I'll be we right back. We should have a spray bottle unless it gets sore. But we don't. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll just keep gluing. What's everybody up to today? Anybody got some leather on the bench? Why did the photograph get out of jail? Because he was framed. Well, because something had to be off. Yeah, 
Why would it go? Why would it go right? <laughs> I think that's where we're at the last the last few weeks is just something is going to be off. It just is going to depend on what it is. I've also turned it off and turned it back on. <laughs> Did you find your water? I found the water, yes. Did you find our water? No. Did you steal it last time? I don't need your water. <laughs> I could steal it. Uh, I could. Forgot that barge has a universal thinner, Denny, and somebody uh -huh. was mentioning that the barge universal will work oh, with great, it. Oh, great, great! But I did. I forgot that they, and we do sell that. We sell the barge universal, universal <laughs> thinner. That's difficult to say. I'm still just going to blame it on the fact that we just hardly ever use rubber cement, so we don't have to. Even like selling it, we just didn't. We also. We sell some, but we don't sell a ton of it. What are you doing over there, Denny? I'm stuck. Oh, your cartouche. My cartouche. What does that even mean? A cartouche. And I saw this at uh, the museum in, in St. Louis. What's the name of that big art museum? Oh, the city museum? Uh, yeah, I forget the name of the museum. But it's a very famous art museum. Okay. But we went and saw an Egyptian deal there one time, and they were talking about a cartouche, and it's a it's an oval with an insignia in it of whoever. It's, and that's like the actual word cartouche. Cartouche, yes. I thought it was a different word, and you were just like, no, making I'm, it fun. No, I'm being serious, and that's what. The old saddle makers used to call their maker's mark as a cartouche because mm. almost all of them were oval. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's, that's been the standard for a long time yeah. in leather crafting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's that cartouche. All right. Okay, everything should be lined up again. Well, that's Are we right. sinking? Have we have we sunk? You've been sunked in. <laughs> What happened to us? Our, our audio was off. Oh. From our mouths. Our mouth audio? <laughs> yeah. So we would say, I don't know which way it was. but Oh, it was like watching a, like a, yeah. a movie. Uh-huh. An with old movie. Yeah, where the audio's not quite right. Where Audrey Hepburn was... She could cuss or do anything she wanted to because it wouldn't come out for a few minutes. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh. me over here trying to get the... Noise reduced a little bit, was slowing down the audio path Gotcha. to the encoder. Technology is okay. complicated. So deal with fan noise. Okay. Okay. Now when you cement this, yes, sir. cement all the way out to this edge, but this edge all the way around, stay back a little ways because we're going to be lacing it. Oh, and you know you, what I mean? Yeah. You do the same thing here. You don't want to have to fight that, yeah. that pillow like Jeff did? Right. <laughs> right. I laced, all right, I glued that pillow up real good, and Jeff had a terrible time attempting to lace my big yeah. old fancy twisty he pillow. Will, he will talk about that until the end. Mm hmm. A cartouche is what I have after driving two hours to get to Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's a cartouche. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a tush, yeah. A car tush. <laughs> um, some is unworked, tanned, and one item is a scabbard. Um, so Blue Rose Lion asked about what to do with leather that was given to you that's stiff and curly. Depending on the leather, I mean, we sell a bunch of leather conditioner, so if it's like an upholstery leather, you could attempt to, you know, use some Big Four um, or even saddle soap um, and loosen those fibers back up. If it's veg tan saddle soap or a stronger like if it's super stiff black rock you might go that far black rock is a pretty intensive conditioner that you could put on um and try to loosen up that leather but it really it kind of de depends on the leather i've heard if it's a vegetable tan leather mm -hmm. uh i've heard people say if you get it wet then while it's drying out but when it gets back to a 
a fairly firm consistency, but while it still has some moisture in it, if you will use oil on it, neat's foot oil, mm. or something to that effect, yeah, that it will uh, it will keep the fibers loose. Gotcha. Okay. But that's you're going to be experimenting. Yes, you will be experimenting. And then on your scabbard that's already put together, probably I I would say black rock would be a good. Uh, conditioner for your finished product if the leather is is stiff and, and old and needs needs some TLC I forgot to give you things. yeah you did How far do I need to go? Um, over over keep going you've got like I'm I'm over the twitch one right now over stop Susan says she got her yellow tape package. Whoop whoop! Bridal bouquets. <laughs> I was telling that I was over here trying to do techie things again, and Tangled Up says, It's okay, you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jessica. She's laying it on thick today. Well, she's just continuing from yesterday. Yeah. She knows she she can she can feel that you still need a little extra love. Oh yeah. I need a trip to the chiropractor when I need. Does she know how to crack backs? Can you come crack a back? Crack a back. Crack a back. Crack a back and go home with a side of love. You know what we could do? Hmm. That I think we can do? Hmm. No, we can't do it. Just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. All right. And then just glue this whole thing? Oh, well, to the edge. Yes. So I bet you, I bet you I know the way we can. It goes all the way into this line, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because across that part, we're going to have to buck stitch. Oh boy! Everybody excited for some buck stitching? Everybody's so, just plain excited. Everybody's always excited. They love it when we come on here and do shenanigans for an hour and a half. <laughs> shenanigans. Bamboozlement. That's right. <laughs> All the bamboozles. I saw something the other night about a shenanigan and I thought of you. Did you? <laughs> I did. Uh, I almost called you the other day. So um, one of our dogs, Wally, he's got a shock collar that he wears all the time. And he lost it. And Chris got like, he got this, like a $300 shock collar. And we were just like, wait, like it, it wasn't in the house anywhere. And we're like, oh my goodness, it's in the jungle. It is in the jungle that is the backyard. And so I almost called you because I know how much your wife loves to do silly things. And I thought maybe they have a metal detector <laughs> from their adventures. I'll tell you, we don't have a metal detector. What I do have is a shock collar though. Oh, do you? I'm going to bring that to you because I have absolutely no Well, we found it. it. We found it. Well, it was, he, he it was might, out in a bush. He might hide it again. And Yeah, he might. But I, uh, yeah, I was like, I was trying to think of all the people that might have metal detectors just <laughs> on hand. And I was like, Denny's wife. I was like, I bet she has a metal detector <laughs> out there looking That's for amazing. bugs. If and, she's and listening treasures. to this, I bet we get one tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon, here we go. <laughs> You know who I think has one? Huh. Jim. Oh, that would also make sense. I've he probably has to pick up all the nails in his yard <laughs> from all of his shenanigans. <laughs> when he does shenanigans. All right. Okay. You, uh, I think we can do what I was going to. Remember the video we showed yesterday? Yeah. Before we fully release it on? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We could watch it. Denny hasn't even seen it. What okay. is it? Uh... 
Justin did a fun video yesterday of um, our resident splitter um, splitting down a side of Herman Oak and kind of processing oh, yeah. a, a side of economy. So you guys want to you want to check out one of our cool recorded videos? It's just short. I it's do. just a little short. You well, because I'm just going to keep gluing. So while I glue, go for it. All right. Okay. We'll watch that real fast. The microphone will still be on. So. Okay. So we can narrate. I'm anxious. Are you? Yes. Don't be too anxious. There's old Jared. Well, he's not old yet. He he, kinda, he's on his way. He's on. We're all on our way. Just remember that. <laughs> I'm assuming they can hear the sound. I, I think so. Okay. I think Jared just made a belly. And Jared did just make a belly. He's special like that. Dale Turner is old. Yeah, our, our Turner, which is our large splitter that we got from Herman Oak several years ago, it's decided to be a little cantankerous um, this week, which was also the week that we decided to, well, that Herman Oak decided to send us two pallets of Economy Plus leather which we have to split here. I mean, we split most of our Herman Oak here, um, but those Economy Plus sides, they come in kind of extra heavy, and sometimes they can just be a little extra dense. They're and, almost uh, skirting leather. Yeah. Wait, aren't they? Yeah, and so they can be a struggle to get through the Turner anyway. So we're having to trim the bellies off of the Economy Plus sides that we send and split them down separately. Um, because we, the, the Turner is just, it needs a little maintenance right now. And there's like one guy in the whole United States that maintains those things. Yeah. I remember when the Herman Oak guy was here, he, they used that Turner for years and years. Oh yeah, they had it since the 80s, I think. Yeah. Maybe early 90s, yeah. but they've had it for a long time. He told Rusty, I think it was Rusty, but he told me, I'm really glad we have it. <laughs> <laughs> really glad I don't have this. But our beautiful Kamogas work great because they are brand spanking new. Yeah. Nothing used about them. Okay. Oh, Hang on, we're, we're, still there. we're shipping. We're shipping now. We've got Brentley. Oh, there it goes. There it is. Whoops. Okay. Everybody enjoy that? Look at that. So I know he's been slipping leather for the last two days. Yeah, that's. I think he's on it. On it today. Yeah. So if any of you out there are waiting for your economy plus sides, the reason that they're behind um, is because we have had to figure out how to process them into the thicknesses that we sold them in. Because our Turner, you know, machinery always. Just like as we sat here last Friday, and we know that things are going to go awry when you need them. That's how it works. All right. I I stuck the liner on this the front part of this. So then I'm going to trim it. Okay. You guys see that around that luscious gray mane? <laughs> Sorry. That's Sorry right, for my lusciousness. <laughs> you can be luscious on your own time. <laughs> Everybody wish my husband and Kevin a, a safe journey. They struck out for Denver this morning at about 7 a.m. We got to work, which is way earlier than I'm usually rising out of bed in the mornings. What are they doing in Denver? Well, so Kevin didn't feel like we had enough rocks to make it through the end of the year. So they are going. There is a rock show in Denver that we've been talking about going to for years, and we just never have, that's in the fall. So they are headed to the rock show in the truck to see what they can buy. Yeah, if you haven't been out to retail lately, then that rock site is just about empty. Yeah, there's hardly any rocks out on that really? retail floor. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just... I think someone's been eating rocks. We have a lot of rocks. Because there were a lot of them out there. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Josh, it's not going to get there before Friday. We're still, we've got, if you just ordered it, we are still working on processing the orders that came in like a week and a half ago to it get because we when he put his in. yeah his oh he said he just ordered one so i don't know what just means but i don't i'm not going to guarantee today is wednesday we would have to ship it today 
and that is probably not going to happen if it was just plates. So just be pa be patient if you've ordered an Economy Plus. We are working through our orders as quickly as possible. We are going in order of when they were ordered. Um, I had somebody that was about a week and a half out on his. He had ordered it pretty much the day that we put it online, and uh, we're just we got to make it through. I think we had like 180 on order y yesterday or Monday. So just be patient with us, Josh. I'm trying to find a better way to communicate when something like that happens. Because uh, I don't know this is going to be the standard mode of operation for those. Do you know? Um, well, just the, the problem with the economy is, is it's not like, because, you know, you can just buy a B-grade side or you can buy a D-grade side, whatever you want, and those just orders kind of trickle through. We split to order every day. You know, we're splitting how many of our sides we need to get out that day. But with the Economy Plus, we get in 150 and then we put them up and then they're almost all gone in like three to five days. And so that, and then we have to split them all to the requested weights. And so that is just automatically gonna put a timeline on those orders. We can't get them all through. It's just not possible to split that much um, as quickly as we typically would like to process our orders. So I think that's just gonna be a, I mean, that's just a thing when it comes to the economies, is that because there's such a demand and there's so, like, there's such a long time between each batch. Well, why are they so rare, Liz? Why, why are Herman Oak Economy Plus so rare for us to get? Because Herman okay. Oak's goal is to create what every single time they put out the I mean, they want an A-grade leather every right. time because they want to get as much because it doesn't, it doesn't matter if they get an A-grade or an economy piece of leather out of that bin. They have to put the same amount of time, chemicals, and effort into the sides. Every side goes through the same process because they don't know what they have. They know, like, once they get the hair off, they might have a bit of an idea, but really until you get it tanned, you don't know the grade of the leather that you have. Um, and so every piece of leather goes through the same process. And obviously they, because tanneries run on such tight margins, like it's two to like 3% is what tanneries typically run on. And so they want to be able to get as high of a grade of leather. So they're not, they're not hoping for less than D grade sides, but no. when they get them and then they just pile it up. So as they get leather that won't fit into the, the A through D that they typically sell, they just put it on a pallet, and they put it on a pallet. And eventually, they'll get to 150 sides. They say, hey, Springfield, we've got a pallet ready to go. Would you like it? And we say, yeah, please send it down. And so we went through, like when we first started, they had a whole bunch of that collecting. And they had just, it had just sat for years so that they had, they had been compiling this really low-grade leather that had come out of the pits. Same quality of leather that they produce because it all goes through the same process but the great the defects it has holes it has blemishes it has bad butcher cuts whatever the case may be um maybe some of the hair didn't get all the way off of it yeah. but in our first couple batches we had some like half hairy veg tan sides it was very strange yeah. we actually made like a roper wallet out of one of like the half hairy pieces and sent it up to herman <laughs> and we were like Thanks for this really weird piece of leather. <laughs> In any case, well, the thing about the thing about them grading their sides, there's a lot of imperfections that don't show up until after the leather is dry. Correct. I mean, you cannot see mm -hmm. a lot of those, especially little tiny insect bites and stuff like that. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, Some of the grain damage probably doesn't yeah. really show up until it's dry. And the hair grain, you know, that's the same way. They they put it in a solution. I'm, I'm not sure. I believe it's a solution of lye and something mm -hmm. else that slips the hair. But sometimes all the hair won't slip, you know. Yeah. Some people are just hairier than others, and cows are the same way. Cows are the same <laughs> way. Yeah. So in any case, how much is the leather B grade. Um, what are B grades right now? Like 230, 240? That's not Okay, we'll, we'll check it out. I think they're somewhere in there. But in any case, yeah. So that's how, that's why and how we get economies. We went through, because they had, like I said, they had several pallets that had stacked up um, over the years. And finally, I think Rusty was up there one time. He's like, what is this? Like in their finishing floor, they just had pallet after pallet, and they're like, "This is just really low grade. We can't sell it." And Rusty was like, "Oh, pfft, I can sell. I can sell this. We will tell people it's not going to be. It's not going to be perfect. You might have some pretty extreme imperfections in an area, but hopefully, you'll get you know a, a decent amount of usable leather. Or hey, yeah, come up with some products that might be a little bit rough." Since the price change, it's at two two sixty four. Two sixty four for a B grade side. 
Um, but yeah, so that's how they accumulate them. And now, like last year, we pretty well worked through their stock of the Economy Pluses as quickly as you guys could buy them. And then um, now we just get them as they generate them. So it's just whatever quality of, of hides, you know, probably, probably a couple sides per batch will come out and won't meet their grading and they'll go on that pile and then once they hit 150 that's when they send it down to us so this is why you watch the lives because there's no way that i can go and i, I guess i'll have to download that piece of that piece of video so that we can see it <laughs> send it out some somewhere i think jenny b this. likes our stones huh Jenny B likes our stones. She's a rock person. She's from Canada. She was actually down here. Oh wow. Yeah. I think she was. I think she's related to uh, Mama T. Oh yeah, Jenny B and Mama T. I think so. Like Mama and sewing. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you want to. Uh huh. You can start punching some lacing holes. Punching some lacing holes. Let me grab a granite. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this was an interesting story, and I don't know how much this is affecting Herman Oak as much as it's affecting um, other countries that produce cattle and hides, but we were talking to one of our tanneries either in Brazil or Mexico. Um, right now it's not coming back to me which one, but apparently with all of everything that's going on in the world right now and uh, you know when, when COVID hit, so many things shut down. And so a lot of people had to try to find alternatives to whatever it was that they were doing. And apparently uh, some of the cattle industry I think it was Brazil, um, realized that they could feed the cattle the same product that they put, uh, like the same vegetable tannins, like whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So they could feed the cattle that same product that they used to tan the leather with. And so now there's just like a crazy demand on that product and they're struggling to get it. And their prices have like tripled yeah. to get that same product to wow. tan the leather because now the cattle industry is using it to feed the cattle, which is very weird, frankly. Like that's, that's, I, I don't remember what it was. I could look back through my emails and, and give you more information. But yeah, so now they're having this competition that they never had before. So that's driven up prices because the production can only go up so much or like you don't they know that the, the production material is... to tan with exactly and so yeah so anyway so yeah prices and just things like that have been crazy now do you want me to do the line here for the bucket yes okay but uh yeah so Actually, that was would really you like me to because i'm at a standstill and oh. you can talk okay sure since you love to do that since i love i'm good at that it took me it took me that long to get going that denny can do it now self-tanning cattle yeah i'm not really sure um, I don't remember what the what the chemical was, but that was interesting. It's it's probably the tree bark. I think so. I th yeah. Because that's the main ingredient in in a vegetable tannin. Mm -hmm. And that that would be the only thing that I could think of that would yeah. actually have maybe nutritional uh, well, you properties. Know, you know they. Uh, I've heard, back when I used to have cows, there were a lot of guys that they would what they call background cows which which means they would raise them up to a certain weight they would buy them buy calves and raise the cattle up to a certain weight and then sell it to someone who got them ready to go to the finish feed lot. Mm -hmm. yeah and uh, I've heard of them feeding them uh, tea like go to a place that makes tea hmm. Like Lipton or whatever, yeah. and you know, the and get solution. that spent tea, and they would feed them that. They huh. would feed them uh, coffee grounds, all sorts of stuff. I, I had a friend that rented my place one time when I was gone, and he bought uh, a vending company you know, all their uh, outdated products, candy, 
cupcakes, all that stuff. He bought three pallets of that stuff and brought it down and he just dumped the pallets out and let the cows have at it. And there was cellophane all over my place for months that I picked up. But those cows would tear the cellophane off and eat that stuff. That is the strangest thing I have ever heard. Well, yeah. But they'll feed cows anything. Yeah. That is true. They're really only meant to eat grass, though, guys. Actually, I, I listened to a, a really interesting book called um, The Omnivore's Dilemma. And it was kind of just about the, the food chain and, and structure. It was a really, I found it to be a very fascinating and educational read. Um, if anybody's out there that's interested. The omnivore, and it just kind of went over. He went over the three different kind of main production styles. So you've got like mainstream food production. And then you've got what, you know, we have now of like the organic, what is labeled as organic food production and he went through some of those farms and really kind of helps you to understand that it's mostly just a buzzword, um, a buzzword yeah. for, for a lot of it um, and then there was um, the more local side of things where you've got kind of like almost like a homestead but on a larger scale um, kind of I'm going to call it the holistic approach to farming where you have the, the circle of the farm that kind of sustains itself. So instead of only producing one thing that depletes whatever it is that, you know, whether it's the soil because you're only growing one crop or whatever, it's a very depleting method of production to kind of more that circle of life production where you've got, you know, every, anyways, mm -hmm. everything moving around, you're growing and rotating your crops and you have several types of livestock that each do their own thing for the environment. Yeah. Oh, and those people, it was really interesting, they, they call themselves grass farmers. So even though like they're producing cattle or whatever livestock it is, they everything starts with the grass. And so he went to this one farm and this guy was like, I'm a grass farmer, that's what I do, is like I make sure that the grass is appropriate for the whatever it is and like he was super into his grass and he could tell you exactly what he had and who eats what and who likes what down it was really fascinating so that was that was, I don't know it's an interesting read for anybody out there where do we start with that uh, Herman Oak Herman economy <laughs> lack, lack of tanning agent so yeah <laughs> That's where we started. <laughs> okay, you want to go back to tombstones? Sure. Yeah, I think somebody <laughs> brought up earlier that at least we hadn't talked about zippers, contact cement, or headstones. <laughs> <laughs> we can circle back, guys, whenever you're ready. Um, okay, so you've got the Facebook up here, but now it's not, like, doing its thing. Okay. Perfect. Now it's time for you to pick the color. Oh, right. I get to pick a color. Guys, we want to pick together. We have, uh, what color did you antique this with? This is maroon. Maroon. No, it's bur uh, mahogany. I'm sorry. Are mahogany. you sure? I am is that your final answer? One, that is my final answer. <laughs> mahogany. Mahogany. All right. So we have maroon. Yes. Fern or this triad of browns. So we've got ochre, cognac, and brandy. Let's see. I'm really liking the brandy or the ochre. I'm liking that one. You're like this one? But it's your choice. Your it's, choice. it's my choice, guys, says Denny. Yes, I'm out of this. I like the brandy. I like the dark uh, with the dark. I had him bring the green in just for kicks. So that's my thing. Alrighty. Or do you cigar or needles, whichever one you want. Oh, you're gonna make me buck stitch? A cigar or needles? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's in there. <laughs> it's needles. Probably needles. <laughs> it's always mahogany because that's the best anti color. <laughs> oh, Johnson Fern. Yeah, I, I I do like the green. I kind of do too. Start, 
buckstitch part of it with green. And see what happens. See what happens. I think. I mean, some people might think yuck, but I bet when it all is said and done, that'll be kind of a nice. It'll be kind of fun. Look to it. See, every, everything should always be green. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, <laughs> but everything should be fun. I know, Jess. I think we'll do. Why not? That's my name backwards. Okay, so when you're buck stitching, what is the rule of thumb for length? Uh, depends on the thickness that you're going through, but for the most part, two or two and a half times. Okay. I would go two and a half times. Two and a half. Just to be safe. Yeah. Can't put, yeah, buck stitching, you really can't put more lace on. It's, it gets a little awkward. I suppose you yeah. can, but it's not ideal. You want to skive that down for me? Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Ouch. <laughs> Pinched myself. Didn't sound good. <laughs> I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't feel that. Um, Dean, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Out through the back for the first one? Yes. Okay. Uh, here's a fit too if you want to open those those holes up a little bit. Thanks. Oh man. Is that where you're gonna be working at, Liz? Ouch. Yeah. Okay. I'm almost there. Okay. I've made it all the way out of my chair. <laughs> slowly stroll oh, over here. Oh guys. I haven't seen a f You mean a full hide, Eugene? I haven't seen a full hide of veg tan. Me either. Usually they're just sides. They don't they generally don't to tan vegetable bit. tan leather in full hide. Yeah, too no, I heavy. haven't. It's too heavy, too hard to handle. Yeah, those guys have to throw those things around. Did you bring pliers with you? No. Okay, they got it. We'll see. It'll probably go easier when I go in. And then I just catch it, right? Yeah. So, and then I just catch it on the back on the yes. first one? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's hard work. Work in a tannery. I, uh, my good friend Rorick works in a tannery these days. And, uh, I feel for him. Throwing around all that leather. Plus, I also text him quite a bit. <laughs> what what is what was the number? Do they tan two hundred and fifty hides a day? Is what they average? I think it's five. Or is it five hundred? It's two hundred and fifty hides. hides so five hundred sides. sides. Yeah. So Hermano produces five hundred sides a day. Which means that on a daily basis, those guys handle five hundred sides of leather. Yeah. Wet leather. Wet. Wet leather. Most of it's going to be unsplit. It, it only gets split at the very end. So it is full weight. They, Herman Oak buys those heavy steers. That's their, that's their MO. That's what they want because mostly, well, maybe not mostly anymore, but the saddle industry is their thing. And it, I mean, probably actually still mostly is. But um, at least they're using the most of the leather. You might have somebody that makes 10,000 holsters, but... Um, the saddle maker's still probably going to use more leather. Yeah. But I can't imagine that because they, I don't know if they change vats every day. I doubt it. But those guys at the end are pulling out oh, well, 500 they... sides mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. 
because they sit in the pits for about 30 days, depending on the leather that they're making. Usually it's, it's gonna be maybe like 25 to 30 days. Yeah, I put my needle on upside down, but I didn't want to redo it because I already pinched my finger once and I was, I was gonna try to get away with. Here, put that on there. You do it real good. <laughs> Look, can I start over? Oh yeah. Because because a lot of times after you've already kind of please do weakened it, it makes it harder. Yeah, I pinched my finger real good. Oh, Tony, I just, so I just went to the doctor this morning, right? Yeah. And I was complaining, you know, about like my elbow, how it's been sore for a while. Mm -hmm. And he gave me some cream to help it out. It's in the car. Maybe I can bring it in and rub it on your back. Maybe it'll help oh, yeah. your back. <laughs> no, it's not. I, it's, I don't, I don't know what emu it is. It's oil. in the car. We used to sell emu oil at Walgreens. They might still sell emu oil, but. Doctor gave me or prescribed some cream for me for arthritis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I forget what it's called, and it does help a little bit, but boy, it's expensive stuff. I think I paid like twelve bucks for my little tube. It didn't feel that bad. Well, this one was like sixty bucks. But maybe you got to go see three, my guy. It was a series of three tubes. Mm. No, I didn't go get it from the doctor. I got it actually from Costco. Oh yeah. <laughs> We can both do this here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I think on Friday we'll come back and Denny will continue to lace this and then I'm gonna make some more pillows. <laughs> so I made I made a bunch of pillows yesterday, but I realized that I um, forgot my fringe. I wanted to put fringe on some of them and I still have a couple more forms left, but I think I'm gonna go buy some more because it's just so much fun. Um, they look cool too. I know. I'll show you guys here in a minute. Let's see here. Phil said in Tennessee they have the Mars Company years ago when they cleared out the chocolate vats, there would be big bars. They used to give this to the cattle farmers and they would mix it with the cattle feed, which would increase the cattle weight. Yep. Mm. That makes sense. Feeding the cows chocolate. Would you complain if you were a cow? Probably not after being fed a bunch of corn that my body is not supposed to handle. Oh, Tangled Up says get some porcelain in it. You should, you should have some access to that somewhere. Well, you, have to be, you have to make sure you get the right kind. Whoa. Don't mess up. I almost, <laughs> I almost did Whoopsies. tremendously. That was a close one, Denny. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, I never make mistakes, though. <laughs> what Bo said, just more expensive products. More expensive products, that's right. Nice. Yeah, Michael is talking about Grizzlies 24 by 36 by 4 granite. Uh, my husband, he got one for knife making, and it's one of the ones from Grizzlies. I don't think, I don't think it was 36. I feel like it, oh, it might be actually, because that's just a 2 by 3. It's, I think so. I think it's uh, really heavy to move, um, but it's very nice. <laughs> They're quite lovely. Yeah, the bigger they are, the quieter you're. Mm -hmm. Stamping gets. Of course, he's not stamping with it. But yeah, he's you not. Could. I could, <laughs> but then I'd have to move back to the garage, and I don't really want to do that. Tell him to get you another one. I like I like working in my room upstairs. Michael said Grizzly has granite surface. Yeah, they're uh, they're machinist granites. They're for leveling. You know, they they have a real close tolerance as far mm -hmm. as how closely they're machined and. They're very they're very expensive, but they're very nice. 
Josh wants to know if anybody has any suggestions for swollen ankles since we're talking about ailments. <laughs> <laughs> walk on it. I think I went the wrong way. <laughs> Rob says hi. Hi, Rob. I said that earlier. Sorry, I got to pull it down again. Mine didn't catch up. Chocolate milk! My brother-in-law loves himself some chocolate milk. Every time Costco has like uh, a two-pack of this brand that he really enjoys, <laughs> he buys one every week. Maybe this is the right way. Maybe this is the right way. <laughs> yeah. Many, okay. How many ways are you trying? Well, this is just the other way, so I'm. I'm it. It looks right. I think. Actually, I think this green is going to look kind of cool. I mean, green and brown go really well together. There it is. Sorry, guys. This one's on manual focus, so it wants to be down here. I change it, but it's all the way up. Yeah, Tony, Tony can't get up there. It's <laughs> That's not happening. Here, do you, here, you, you want the old gray-haired man to do it for you? Yeah, jump up there. Can you shut on that one, Liz? Denny, while we're doing this, you want to talk about your finishing process? As far as the antiquing? Mm-hmm. Everybody loves to learn about your finishing process. There's really no secret to it, <clears throat> you guys, if you just... I feel like patience. Just do exactly what I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> All you've got to do, let your leather dry, go over it with a light coat of Neat's Foot Oil or vegetable oil, I always tell everyone if you really want to get exotic, probably olive oil is the best. And everyone says, well, which one gives you the best color? They will all give you about the same color. Well, and also the color is going to depend a lot on the leather that you're using. The leather that you use and how much light it has, it has had on it and how yeah. much light it gets on it. I was going to say, if you want it to get super dark, shoot, oil it and put it out in the sun. Right. It'll, it'll darken just right. like you do. And this, well, this leather right here that we're working with was this color this morning. Yep. When I got to work, it was this color this morning. Okay. And you now can it's bad for that. Yes, and now it's this color. Okay. So what, what did I did, do? a light cut coat of oil, like I was just telling you. <clears throat> After that sets for a little while and it doesn't have to be overnight. It, overnight will will give you the exact color that is going to end up. But after it sets for a little bit, then go over it with a resist of some sort. I use Master's Quick Shine. I love the stuff because you spray it on, you love spray it, it and forget it. I, I used to use a Neat Lac. Neat Lac is a mm -hmm. thing of the past. They, it, I think the EPA, It is too hazardous for our health. Yes, the EPA has, has nixed that for us, <laughs> which is fine because I like, actually I like the, the Master's Quick Shine better. But any kind of a resist. After that sets, then take your antique, whether it's antique paste or the, well, I always use Phoebe's, antique paste or the antique uh, gel. gel. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of them will do basically the same thing. I have found no difference myself, and I antique quite a few items. That's mostly what you do. Yeah. You tool them, and then you antique them. Yes. Uh, after you've spread your antique on, you can immediately, since you have put a resist on, you can immediately start wiping that off. The key is to wipe it. Don't scrub it off, because you aren't trying to get the antique out of all the low spots out of all your cuts and tool impressions. You're trying to leave it there but wipe it off of the highlights. Mm -hmm. 
after you uh, wipe it until there's no streaks left on the leather. If you have some puddles, like um, I don't, I don't know if I can show you here. Uh, like, like in a low spot, like these uh, thumbprint areas here, there a lot of times there will, there will be a puddle of, of your antique paste there or antique gel. You can take a piece of sheepskin and lightly wipe across the whole surface, and it will it will uh, actually kind of dig some of that uh, that paste back out of there. But you don't want to you don't want to be aggressive enough where you actually take all of your color back out. Yeah, because then you just have to do it again. Yeah. But after after you've got it and there's no streaks on your leather, let it dry good. I use a hair dryer, and in in 15 minutes I'm ready to put my final coat of finish on. If you use a wipe on finish, <clears throat> just be aware that it's going to wash some of that antique back off a yeah. little more than what you just wiped off. Yeah. So uh, we typically be very recommend careful. doing a spray if you yeah. if you can. Yeah. Yeah. If you use a spray, you don't have to touch it. You don't lose any of your antique. Yep. To, that's my process. That's what I did on on this these items right here. Dean wants to know at. what you use when you wipe it off. I use a paper towel. Yep. And but but I also have a, one piece of sheepskin generally, and and after I've wiped it until there's no streaks, if I have some puddles, I'll lightly go over it with that sheepskin one time, and then wipe it with paper towels again until there's no streaks. Mm-hmm. But to, <clears throat> the deeper your impressions are, the more antique that it's going to accept. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, if, if you don't tool very deeply, you aren't going to get nearly the effect that you do if, if you do tool deeply. And if there's no tooling at all, you aren't going to get much effect out of it at all. It will color the leather a bit because it'll get down in all the little... Hair cells. Hair, hair cells, yeah. Well, and this is so, for, like the antique paste really does not color the leather. Like, it looks kind of splotchy because it really just gets in those holes, but it's not coloring the leather. Yeah. Like it doesn't, but the antique gel will color the leather. Like if you don't put a finish on it, it will, and, and like it, I, I like to think of the antique gel as an option for almost like a, um, <clears throat> like a wash or like a like a wood stain to where it you can you can color the leather but you'll still see um, almost like an aniline dye you'll still see the the look of the leather underneath because it's not a solid color to where sometimes if you use you know like number one if you're painting obviously that completely color covers the leather but then if you use a dye it is a solid color over over the top of it, and, and you still can see like the the surface of the leather and and some of the imperfections. But um, so that's kind of how I describe yeah, it's the kind difference. of a filler. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 But so I don't think that I'm very good at buck stitching, so I'm stopping yeah. because my things are going back and forth, and I don't like it, and I can't figure out what I'm doing, and I don't like it, so I'm just I'm gonna let Denny do it later. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's about time to stop. Anyway. It is. Let's see here. What do you use for your final finish? <coughs> Wayne, we already said, uh, Denny uses Quick Shine for his final finish. Um, a spray on is preferable to a wipe on, so you do not disturb your antique. Now, you'll talk to some people that say, I always use a wipe on, and that's fine. If they've got to figure it out, then that's awesome. But if you're asking me how I do it, I use a spray on. That is correct. Um, Denny, we did have one person that wanted to know how you do the transition between your floral tooling and then your background cover. How, how I cover up the edge, Sorry. the raw um, spots. I use a, uh, this is a matting tool. <coughs> the overhead camera turned off. So you'll have to oh, it's it. off? Okay. Oh, it, yeah, it shuts oh. off. Where am I? Over here. So like you're, yeah, okay. how do you transition okay. from one? From Around here I beveled this with a regular beveler, but then after I've, Hang on. After I've done my, uh, my geometric up 
within a half a tool width is about how far I, I like to be away from it. Then I'll use a matting tool, just like a beveler, only it just mats around it. If you can see, it's very dark around there, mm -hmm. and it just kind of it camouflages that uh, that raw edge of your geometric tool. Yeah, just like the camouflage here, or like a border tool yeah. is also a camo. So he's covering up just the unevenness of whatever your background is. Yeah. Your matting tool will come in around your, your carving yeah. and blend everything together. And I've even seen people, and I've tried it before, I never had very good luck with it. They'll use a small camouflage tool actually around this edge, mm -hmm. you know. Anything, anything, just to cover up the raw edge of, of your uh, just blend geometric. it all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because geometrics, they you can never get them to come out quite like it's never going to line up perfectly unless you make your project in the same dimensional like way that your geometric tool is going to yeah. come out. So yeah, okay. And then also, real fast, I, we could actually do this. Would be maybe a good short video for you. But Robert was asking. Um, about how to mix the neutral antique with the antique or with the acrylic paints to make custom antiques. Do you ever do much of that? No, I haven't, but it, there are some people here at the store that have. I'm saying, I think Melissa played with that quite a bit because yeah. she just liked to play with colors, but then maybe Ryan and Andy have also done a little bit. Ryan and Andy and I think Aaron up at the oh, front yeah. have done some too. Yeah, good too. yeah we maybe. can, we'll work on some of that. Yeah. I, I think the the neutral you can reduce down the colors of the actual other paste antiques right right to get a less mm -hmm. intense color um, but then you can mix also paints and yeah. dyes with it I, th I think the dyes would probably mix better than than the acrylic paints would mm -hmm. but uh, I could be wrong we'll we'll do some playing around with that um, uh, Robert and see what we can come up with so. <laughs> what else have we got? Let's see here. The Leather Lab was um, agreeing with you that those transitions can be tricky, like trying to figure out where to stop stamping and get your thing in. But I'm sure at this point you just, you uh, just know. <laughs> yeah, just like I say, <clears throat> when you're using a geometric stamp against or even a border, when you get close to that border, if you hold your your okay. stamps up straight, it's going to. Uh, mm -hmm. You kind of got to tilt it. Or you have to tilt it, tip it a little bit. Yeah, you got to pay yeah. attention to where you're coming up with your lines. That's why, like having everything marked out is really important when you start tooling, so that you know where your borders are. Exactly. And all your stuff yeah. is. And you know, it depends on the the type of uh, camouflage that you're going to use. Mm -hmm. And the, or the type of matting tool that you're going to use as to how close you're going to get. I, I say a rule of thumb is half a tool width. Stay stay that far away from all of your edges. Gotcha. What matting tool number was that? I doubt. We I don't. don't know. I will let you know Friday. So Dean, be on the lookout. Denny will let you know then. We'll bring all the we'll, we can bring all the tools in and we can show everybody on Friday. Yeah. I could have I, I was like, hey, I mean, I guess we had them last week, but you didn't really talk about it because we were being all hush hush on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just have gone off into a Herman Oak tangent that would be great for a separate video all on its own for That's education. Right. Yeah. So perfect. It would be neat. We, you know, didn't we? They gave us a movie, didn't they? When we went to the tannery. Well, they've got a tour that you can yeah. watch on YouTube, yeah. I think. That's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah. That was, it's it very, was, very interesting and informative. I think Warren Giles did oh, one yeah. for them, too, that's a really nice one. Yeah. Yeah. And well, their tannery is really neat. I've been up there a couple times, but I would like to go. We've been talking about doing some more tours with some of the employees here at the store that we need to. Chris and I need to get on that. We need to get on that. But, I ain't never been nowhere with anybody. They don't take me. I can't leave my little desk chair. <laughs> I mean, really, today he just really we'll can't leave. We'll tell you all about it, Tony. Yeah, perfect. We'll, we'll take him one everything day. Everything you need to know. I'll let you know how to use a camera so you can use them while you're up there. <laughs> all righty, guys. Well, we appreciate all the questions and comments. Hopefully, everybody had a good time today. I feel like this was a good one. This was a good little informative bit that we did today. <laughs> so I feel like I've been quiet the last few weeks. I got my talking on. Alrighty, well, Friday we will be back, and uh, Denny will just be lacing, and I will be set up to be making some fringy pillows. So that's what we're going to do on Friday. And then, as always, tomorrow, Tony and I 
maybe mostly me tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Tony might just sit here and I'll do some stuff and he can I'll talk. I'll just lay on the table. I'll just lay. <laughs> how am I supposed to roll up the leather if you're laying on it all the time? I think getting on and off the table would be more difficult than just maybe just oh, sitting here. I'll just here. get on it one time. There won't be any getting off. <laughs> I'll just lay up there. But anyways, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central Time on Facebook, come and join us for what is sure to be some shenanigans. Maybe I'll get Tony some cupcakes some tomorrow. Um, some shenanigans of live shopping and then we'll be back on Friday. So everybody have a great midweek. Good hump day out there and we will see you later. Bye. Bye everybody. <laughs>